Hi, Ron here from Envision CAD. I just wanted to take a minute and look at the mile high view of Open Roads technology. And that's a key word. It's technology, it's not a software platform. It's technology incorporated into the Bentley platforms of Inroads, Geopack, and MX Roads. We're moving away from storing files in an external database or file format and storing them in the DGN uh, model. So in the CAD file, that's where your horizontal geometry, vertical geometry, quarter definitions, all this information is either stored or viewed dynamically or developed dynamically. It's in the CAD file, not in these external files. Now you can import some of this data and you can also export it because we do need to circle back to the traditional workflows that we've used in SS2 select series 2 for uh, plan and profile generator some of the labeling maybe printing creating uh, profile sets that are stored in the CAD file they're also um, available in the open roads technology but they're dynamic they're not in the CAD file and we'll see how that works so you can always go back and forth in between the geometry and surfaces between sex series 2 and 3 import export or even make them dynamic so let's take a look at the product so let's just get the slides show out of the way and look at a CAD file. So I'm in my uh, topography drawing here and that's all I have in here is just the graphics part of it. I want to incorporate a um, DGN file, not a DGN file, a DTM file into here to show you how things are uh, uh, moving along with the technology. If I come up to my task menu here you'll notice I don't even have my inroads dialog box open but inroads is running so just stepping back here for a second. If I go open up my inroads dialog box um, I don't have any uh, surfaces in memory I don't have any geometry in fact I don't even need to use this dialog box anymore um, and in cases I can't find what I want in this dialog box anymore no more templates no more uh, quarter modeler no site modeler tools those are not incorporated in here in fact if I try to create cross sections I can't even create them. So um, we're moving away from the traditional Inroads Explorer dialog box and going to the task menu. But I just don't need this dialog, so I'm going to um, collapse it. So back to my task menu. I want to uh, create a train model, and I'm going to create it from a file. Obviously, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I'm just going to pull this DTM in, my external file. And what that'll do is create a train element that's a new microstation element. And I'm going to uh, select a feature definition here. And this is really just for display. We're not going to get into all this, but just show you how it works at a real high level here. So what I have now is my topography. And this is a terrain element stored in my DGN file. Um, I can still select it, go to properties here. A lot of heads up displays in open roads, which is very um, beneficial. If I want to just change display we can change it up and of course we have full control on how this stuff looks what level it goes to as we've always had. So I'll just leave this uh, topography drawing as is. Now remember that is stored in my DGN file. I'm going to change CAD files. I'm going to go over to my um, uh, geometry file which by the way does have this same topography drawing referenced. Now with references we see the the topo that uh, we were seeing in that original drawing. I also have because that's referenced I also get any of the engineering information that's in there. So here's my uh, existing ground terrain element. It's in that CAD file. Now I have a level off here so let me go turn that on in that reference file and this is uh, my terrain elements in that reference file so not only do I get the graphics referenced I also get the terrain if I decide that um, I want to turn on or view contours we can uh, just do it heads up display through the properties of that particular element if I decide to turn them off there I don't have my contours anymore but I do see the limits of the terrain element so I now have my train element. Now where I'm heading here is I want to create a corridor and in order to create a corridor I need a horizontal alignment and a vertical alignment and a template applied to it. There's a number of really interesting things with open roads technology we can do. 
I'm going to go over to my task menu. I'm going to go to horizontal geometry and I'm just going to create um, a horizontal alignment that says complex by PI which allows me to put the tangents in and the uh, radiuses um, all at the same time. Now as I create this alignment there's a lot of behind the scenes things that we're not looking at here showing you right now. Um, but there's a radial button up here that says um, create 3D automatically and let me just take this off. That's my feature definitions toolbar. If that is enabled, when I create my horizontal alignment, Open Roads Technology will look at the existing terrain or the active terrain model and create a best fit alignment for me. And again, you have control on how that alignment is built. And I can also take that a step further and create my vertical alignment as I create my horizontal and I can also apply a template so I can model my corridor. And it's all tied back to this feature definition. But we aren't going to get into the, all the nitty gritty right now. So let me just uh, just we'll just kind of wing it here, and I'm going to say, well, let's just create a a, a roadway or a corridor that uh, has a tangent that goes something like this, and I'm going to pull over to the right to put my next tangent in. And you can see the outlines of a corridor being built. You can also see I have a heads up display. Might be a little bit tough to see, but right now the radius is set to 650. If I decide to change that to 850, simply key it in and I'm going to pick the end of my next tangent and now I have a very simple horizontal alignment with a um, single curve in it. If I zoom in here you can see it has modeled a corridor for me. I'll just rotate this view around. You can see that it's built a corridor. Pretty interesting stuff and what I would like to do then is also look at the profile and the cross sections that go with that. So I'm just going to go back up to top view here element selection tool becomes very important in select series 3. I'm just going to go ahead and um, hover on my horizontal alignment here. I'm going to instruct it I want to open a profile model and my prompt down here says open view. So I'm really just opening or defining a microstation view to display my model in. I'm just going to turn on grid display here. Here's that best fit alignment that inroads has created for me. You can see I've, I do need to make some modifications. I'm not tying into existing ground the way I would like to, but we'll do that in a second. Now the other way I would like to look at this is in a cross-section view. So I'm just going to um, uh, go to my model here with a heads-up flyout display. I'm going to say open cross-section model. Click in a microstation view. Maybe change the distortion here a little bit and I can walk down my cross sections, you see I get an indicator line in plan and profile view like we used to in a roadway designer of the cross sections that I have created. Now let's go back to the beginning of this alignment because I would like to change it. I want to tie my um, profile into existing ground. Go back to my element selection tool. I'm going to select this alignment and I have to do something called the convert to profile rule. Just makes it a ruled alignment, but we aren't going to um, get into all the nitty gritty of that right now. But it allows me to pick up this alignment. I'm going to tie it into existing ground, change its uh, vertical location. It updates my uh, profile, or not my profile, but my roadway model. And I can also see in my cross section how I'm now tied into existing ground. So it's dynamic modeling. As you make changes, the model updates. Do the same thing at the end. We'll just get down here so you can see that we're not matching existing ground. If I pick this profile, snap into existing ground, it's going to regenerate my model and update my cross sections for me. And I, I tied in just a little bit short of ex the end of my existing ground. So you can see that um, I'm closer. Let's just do it the right way. Pick this up, snap to the end. Let my uh, quarter reprocess, get down to the end. Now I am tied into existing ground. So that's how it works in uh, profile view. You can also make those changes in plan view. If I want to pick up my horizontal alignment, I'll use my element selection tool. I can pick up that alignment and move it to wherever I want it to uh, tie in. And that's going to recreate my model as well. So, so it's dynamic immersive modeling. Pretty interesting stuff. 
So that's it. That's the big view for Open Roads technology. And as I mentioned, if I wanted to now, I'd have to go back to my Select Series 2 to do the traditional workflows like plan and profile generator and maybe uh, make a profile sets, display them in my CAD file, and um, continue on with my workflows for generating plans. That's it for this session. Thank you for watching.